Hello and welcome to a, another Doctor's Assistant 1 video and today I'm doing a review of the Ninth Doctor issue 14 of the ongoing series. I have to admit I really like this cover quite a bit. I mean I think it's because it just looks so to me it embodies series 1 uh, of the revived series um, you know with their sort of equivalent of the round things, the round holes, the round things even from the classic series but um what I regard as my TARDIS, um, and that interior, and then that sort of seat, and then just the way sort of Chris Eccleston sort of sat on it, the Ninth Doctor of sorts, and that, and then you got, you know, Doctor Who, ongoing uh, adventures of the Ninth Doctor, Doctor Who, Ninth Doctor, issue 14, Kevin Scott, and the artists and writer, Kevin Scott, TARDIS barcode there, 14, Titan Comics, on the back you've got an advertisement for the 12th Doctor and Bill, the new adventure thing from them. You've got what's out from Titan Comics this month, and other Doctor Who stuff, and other stuff they do, and whatnot. The variant covers, which I'd have been fine with uh, B, not so much with C, but A is the standard cover. Subscription thing, you get cheaper stuff, um, digital downloady things for you kiddos, um, graphic novels, and then the variant covers of next month's issue, which I don't have with this recording, but I really like issue, or cover A, well, not so much the ninth Doctor, but Rose anyway in that, um, but yeah, the grand final. Which I'm assuming looks like it'll be the last one, more than likely. So, but, uh, Doctor Who, Ninth Doctor, The Bidding Wars, Part 1, written by Kevin Scott, artist, colorist, letterist. But what is interesting is that they seem to have a, in memory of this person, um, 1962, 2013. I don't know who that is. Might actually have an idea. I think it might be the person who... Uh, invented a sonic screwdriver, maybe, and wrote a few episodes here and there, maybe, that's just an idea, I might be wrong, if you know, please do comment below, and then for some weird reason it says, with thanks to Big Finish, I have no idea why they have a thank you to Big Finish, maybe it's because of the thing they do at the ending, maybe, maybe not, I don't know, end of the comic, uh, book, you've got the website, Twitter, and Facebook for Titan Comics, so to give them feedback previously, who the Doctor is, Rose and Tara is, uh, who they are even, um, yeah, it definitely opens, like, story-wise pretty weird, but in retrospect it kind of makes sense, um, and it's weird reading and or thinking about this story back uh, after reading it, as I read these and then review them pretty much uh, straight after, uh, so I have a pretty raw uh, uh, perspective and or, you know, yeah, like it's not like I've forgotten quite a lot since I've read it, last time I checked anyway, but what I will say is that I don't know if this is a good thing or a bad thing, it's definitely interesting because obviously Series 1 and, yeah, therefore the Ninth Doctor, Rose and Captain Jack were very much, well, were pretty much m mainly written by Russell T. Davis, really. Think about it, besides Russell T. Davis, there was Robert Sherman, who wrote one episode, Dalek, Mark Gatiss, who wrote one episode, Stephen Moffat wrote a two-parter, and then that was it. Besides those three people, the rest of the stories were by Russell, which isn't a bad thing by any means, but I, and I only bring that up because it feels, this story very much feels like, say, something like Extremis, dare I mention that episode, um, <clears throat> or just another sort of very fast-paced, sort of a bit all over the place sort of uh, story, I don't know, like, by Stephen Moffat, like, say, maybe A Good Man Goes to War, I don't know, yeah, A Good Man Goes to War is probably the best way to compare it to a Stephen Moffat story, I think, um, it has this epic sort of scope to it, this story, for me anyway, in particular, 
And, um, I don't know, I think it just depends on what kind of fan you are, as to what kind of stories you like, or what you embody Doctor Who sort of doing as a as a show and or format wise if that makes sense like some people want it more sort of self-contained some people regard it as an epic for lack of a better term and i try not using I try not to use that word too often here on the channel and or in life genuinely because i don't know i just feel like when i say something's epic it has like a sort of cheesy sort of hooky uh almost yeah cheese factor to it like oh like joss whedon if he was to be like oh these avengers movies that i make are epic you know it just it sort of it's it's a bit like he's been a bit too self-aware that some of it is a bit cheesy and a bit you know maybe for lack of a better term pandering to kids maybe you know on a manufacturing on a product placement e well not product placement but on a product wise basis um and again i think that's the thing like depending on who you are when you grew up with doctor who and 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 you know and yeah what doctor who means to you depends on whether or not you like the idea of something a story being quote unquote epic you know a story can be dark and and gritty and can still be an epic it can be still to me an epic is just something that's engaging has a big scope and a big threat to it. So I would class, say, something as, like, Pyramids of Mars or this as an epic, or A Good Man Goes to War as an epic, you know? Um, but, yeah, a lot of people didn't like Extremis. I did, and this feels like, sort of, like, Extremis meets Series 1. So, like, you know, the fast-pacedness and the sort of really cool idea of like using um like technology like facebook of sorts and, and a lot of futuristic -y, there's a lot of futuristic sort of jokes about technology and where it's gone and whatnot in this which is pretty cool as a person who um is into technology and that uh and that you know I just, I love some of the artwork on this and some of the pages, you know, this just looks amazing. Some of it's very Blade Runner-esque um, and that, and very, yeah, high high sci-fi. And again, it makes me, it reminds me of, as I say, Extremis, which, considering it was by Stephen Moffat, it could have been worse, or it could have been more intense. Rose just looks gorgeous there as well, I have to admit. Like, she looks hot. Uh, which is a bit weird to say. Then there's this other character who then... They start like almost cosplaying as Captain Jack, which is pretty cool. Giant mummy, and yeah, that was weird and scary. And then, um, and then there's just these cool panels of yeah, really cool. Nice seeing the interior of the TARDIS again, the old one on my original TARDIS design, um, and that all the memories flooding back. Um, yeah, because fast pace doesn't always. I don't know why, but with Doctor Who, and at least with Stephen Moffat's era, yeah, like, I think looking back and sometimes trying to watch, say, a Russell T. Davis story, sometimes they can feel a bit too slow-paced now, because I'm so used to the fast-pacedness of, uh, of a Stephen Moffat story, but the thing is, sometimes that's not bad, you know, at the end of the day, he does have a time machine, and surely time would be quite often sped up for him, and you know i just i don't know i mean it's finding that balance and i mean neither's right or wrong i mean i, I depending on my mood i might prefer a, a russell t davis sort of story like say smith and jones than say extremist but the other week i might prefer something else um again lovely just panels here sort of wrapping up what happened previously uh on the previous issue midway um more sort of shock and awe and just spaceships you know and and that end bit you know the way it ends on that cliffhanger is pretty freaking epic that just looks so cool you know there's a lot there's a lot going on in this issue um a, a lot to take in and a lot to uh enjoy if you're a fan of the ninth doctor if you're a fan of yeah, his era, wish he'd had more than just the one series, 
and that I would definitely highly recommend this one um, as it's sort of ironic well it's kind of self it references something that's happened before in the comic book series that it's you know a part of but it also sort of has another villain from the main series uh, spoiler alert being the uh, Slovene so but or a Slovene woman I think or creaturey person I think she's a Slovene anyway but yeah uh, I would definitely recommend this one uh, and that, and I mean, the last one, I, I'm assuming the next one's the last one, so that'll be interesting. And uh, yeah, I'm kind of getting a bit sad, really, that this is ending, really, because, um, I don't know, I mean, last, from what I remember of the last issue, it was a bit meh, it was a bit okay, but this one's really sort of, I don't know, somehow got me more engaged, uh, maybe because of the cliffhanger, maybe because of the pacing and the fast paceness and uh, so much stuff here, but it seems to be paced out very well. I, I genuinely, I can't tell, is there, is there actually more of a higher page count here or than the previous one? The previous one just seemed to really sort of be kind of slow and sluggish, whereas this, yeah, feels a lot more fast paced to read. Which is a bit weird, but yeah, uh, yeah, and there's a lot of interesting and and, and vibrant and new and fresh uh, bad guys at the end of this issue as well. Uh, but yeah, I definitely recommend uh, definitely recommend this for anyone who's a fan of the Ninth Doctor. Thanks for watching. Comment, rate, and subscribe.